Maps always remind us, Europe is to the North Africa to the South. But Spain and Morocco want to bring the two continents closer together. They claim it could take just about one hour to cross from Europe to Africa, not on paper. But with steel and concrete, this could mean a crazy bridge or a $10 billion tunnel drilled under the sea at depths reaching nearly 3,000 feet. Cutting through the boundary of two tectonic plates, it's a mega project that could define a century. But its fate actually depends on soccer. Yes, you heard that right. Stick with us to the end, and we'll answer all your questions. On one side is the Atlantic coast, on the other is the Mediterranean. And only a short stretch of less than nine miles separates Europe from Africa. This is the Strait of Gibraltar, where the two continents face each other directly and the only gateway connecting the Atlantic, the Mediterranean, the Suez Canal, and the Indian Ocean. Over 150 countries have trade routes passing through here from Middle Eastern oil giants to the huge markets of Asia and America. Each year, more than 65,000 ships squeeze through this narrow passage that's nearly 10 times the total traffic of the Panama Canal. Just the Spain-Morocco ferry route alone accounts for about 30,000 trips carrying millions of passengers and over 13 million TEU's 20-foot equivalent units of cargo, about the same as the combined container volume of the ports of Los Angeles and Long Beach. But with such a vital strategic location, every nation around here, even those thousands of miles away, has at some point claimed the strait as their own. It sounds crazy, but it's true. Back in 1610, Spain enforced a strict rule any ship passing through without flying a flag would be met with cannon fire. Yes, you heard that right. On the African shore, Ceuta is still Spanish territory. Across the water, the Rock of Gibraltar has been a British overseas territory since 1713, a fact Madrid has never accepted. In 1956, when Morocco gained independence, they took control of almost the entire southern shore except Ceuta. The result, a strip of sea just over six miles wide, is contested by Morocco, Spain, and the UK. And you know what? Even though radar VTS and patrol boats keep Gibraltar safe, safe doesn't mean fast or sustainable. Imagine tens of thousands of containers waiting for ferries passengers stuck on deck in rough seas. Ships here aren't just slow, they're expensive. Every hour of delay in Gibraltar can cost Europe's supply chain millions of dollars. Plus, the emissions from all those diesel ferries basically turn the strait into a giant smokestack. That's why the dream of a permanent crossing was born. An electrified corridor across the strait wouldn't just cut travel time. It would create a new economic axis, the EU and North Africa. Experts predict this route could serve 12.8 million passengers a year, the entire population of Belgium, while turbocharging trade between the two shores. More importantly, it would create tens of thousands, even hundreds of thousands of jobs in construction operation and maintenance. If you think the simplest solution is to just build a bridge stop and think again. The idea sounds simple since we've seen spectacular sea bridges before the Hong Kong Zhuhai Macau Bridge is about 34 miles long, almost four times the narrowest part of Gibraltar. But here it's basically impossible. First imagine driving on a bridge in the middle of the sea with Levante or Poniente winds blasting at 45 miles per hour the strength of a Category 1 hurricane. The Milau Viaduct in France can handle winds up to 68 miles per hour, but that's over a river. In Gibraltar, winds from two oceans collide and constantly change direction. Then there's the depth. The average seabed at Gibraltar is 1,200 feet deep, with spots reaching 3,000 feet. That's 15 times the height of the Statue of Liberty. Building bridge pillars at that depth is almost impossible. The water pressure there is 30 times greater than at the surface enough to crush any steel structure if calculations are off by even 1%. And don't forget Gibraltar sits right on the boundary between the African and European tectonic plates, which shift a few centimeters every year. The seabed is anything but stable. In 1996, Professor Tung Yen Lin, a structural genius, drew up plans for a super bridge nine miles long 
with towers up to 3,000 feet high, almost twice the height of the Eiffel Tower. Beautiful, inspiring, but just not realistic. The costs and risks are far beyond even humanity's boldest projects. Some engineers even thought of a floating cable-stayed bridge like offshore oil rigs anchored by giant cables to the seabed. Sounds cool, but imagine maintaining dozens of massive cables in the strongest currents of the Mediterranean, while thousands of container ships pass below. If a bridge is nearly impossible, the second option sounds more feasible, a tunnel under Gibraltar. This idea isn't new. Back in the 1930s, Spain dreamed of drilling a tunnel, but the rock under the seabed was as hard as steel, and technology at the time was helpless. In the 1970s, after the Channel Tunnel connected England and France, the dream was revived. A Spanish-Moroccan joint agency was formed in 1991 to survey the seabed. But just a few years later, a sovereignty dispute over Perigil Island broke out and everything stalled. In 2003, the two governments restarted the project. The plan, a 17-mile rail tunnel, almost 1,600 feet deep, connecting Tarifa in Spain to Tangier in Morocco. If completed, you could go from Madrid to Tangier in just six hours instead of a whole day by ferry. But remember the channel tunnel under the English Channel is only 570 feet deep with a flat, stable seabed while Gibraltar is rugged with faults and even mud volcanoes. Drilling through here is like poking a drill into a geological time bomb, Swiss engineer Giovanni Lombardi put it bluntly. Compared to Gibraltar, the channel tunnel is child's play, and he's right. The depth is three times greater, the water pressure is many times higher, Plus, swirling currents mean any small mistake could spell disaster. Not to mention the estimated cost is $19.5 billion. Technically, three options have been considered deep drilling with modern TBM's tunnel boring machines laying a submerged tunnel with concrete tubes or building technical islands as transfer stations. But every option carries deadly risks, flooding fires like the Channel Tunnel had in 1996 and 2008 or how to ventilate a 25-mile underwater tunnel. So the project was put on hold again. When the Gibraltar Tunnel Project seemed dead forever, a sports event gave it new life. On October 4, 2023, FIFA officially awarded the 2030 World Cup to Morocco, Spain, and Portugal. Suddenly, the vision of a bridge or tunnel linking two continents with steel concrete or an underground passage was back on the table. Sounds strange, right? Why would soccer have anything to do with an impossible infrastructure project? But think about it. The World Cup isn't just 90 minutes on the field. It's about infrastructure, travel, tourism, and national image. For a month, millions of fans will flood the Iberian Peninsula and North Africa. Tens of thousands of flights, ferries, and trains will squeeze through Gibraltar. But can a fragile ferry system often shut down by Levante winds handle that pressure? That question brought the Gibraltar project back to life. Morocco immediately tasked the Société Nationale d'Études du Détroit with reviewing feasibility, while Spain reactivated the Sociedad Española de Estudios de Comunicación Fija. These agencies are now digging through all the geological data calculating the latest German TBM technology, and even considering breaking the project into phases to be ready for the World Cup. The World Cup lit the spark, but to make it real, everything has to be put on paper. And now, the new plan is taking shape. Italy's La Repubblica didn't hesitate to say merging Europe and Africa is the tenth most important of Hercules' twelve labors. And this surreal dream is closer than ever. On May 11, 2023, the Spanish government announced a budget of 1.6 million euros, about $1.7 million, to restart the feasibility study. The proposed route from Punta Paloma in southern Spain to Punta Malabada in northern Morocco, the narrowest point just eight miles between the continents. But the actual tunnel would be much longer 17.2 miles under the Mediterranean with the whole route from Madrid to Casablanca expected to reach 26 miles at depths similar to the 2008 plan. 
Sounds doable, but estimated costs range from 6 to $10.5 billion a light number compared to the Channel Tunnel, which costs $28.5 billion in today's dollars. Still, experts warn, don't get too optimistic. After the inflation shock of 2022 rising interest rates and financial risks in all three currencies Euro, Moroccan Durham, and US dollar, this project is a risky gamble. The goal to transport 12.8 million passengers a year, turning the EU-North Africa corridor into a new trade artery. New geological surveys are set for 2024 to 2025, and even Vodafone is being brought in to ensure tunnel communications. Still, let's be realistic, 2030 is unlikely to be the completion date even if politicians love to say so to voters. The most optimistic experts are aiming for 2040 at least 15 years from now. If the Gibraltar Tunnel is ever finished, it could be a green turning point for humanity. Just replacing tens of thousands of ferry and container ship trips a year could cut 2 to 3 million tons of carbon dioxide emissions, the same as over 600,000 American cars in a year. Oil spill accidents, which have given the Mediterranean the nickname Plastic Sea, would drop significantly. The electrified rail system across the strait could serve 12.8 million passengers a year, boosting EU North Africa trade without relying on planes or diesel ferries. But there's another side. Building almost 1,600 feet below sea level means cutting through some of the world's most sensitive ecosystems. The Mediterranean and Atlantic aren't just shipping lanes, they're a biological crossroads where thousands of species of fish whales and dolphins migrate every year, lowering giant TBMs to the seabed dumping spoil and causing geological vibrations. Could that trigger an environmental disaster? One miscalculation could turn this green gateway into a permanent scar on the ocean. So what do you think? Share your thoughts in the comments. Do you support this green gateway or are you worried it's an ecological disaster? Don't forget to like, subscribe, and turn on notifications so you won't miss our latest documentaries.